Hey guys, this is day four of developing Codename SSG here. Um, I guess I might as well just run it, show you guys what I've got here. Uh, I've worked a bit on the login screen, uh, not a lot, but I've added quite a bit to the game engine. Uh, no, I lied, I haven't added a lot to it. So basically all I've done is I've added a text box area or whatever thing, and I've added key hooking for the keyboard. Um, that was actually quite a bit of work, adding the key hooking for the keyboard. Um, unfortunately, I had to use low-level key hooking, uh, but, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a bit uh, less efficient, and you, might, you guys might be concerned about your privacy, right? Virus scanners might um, set it off, well, actually. No virus scanner. This won't set off any virus scanners, but if you're really paranoid and you have a super amazing virus scanner, it would set it off, right? So basically how low-level key hooking works is whenever you type in something anywhere on your computer, it actually has to be processed by my game here. But, um, you know, to solve that whole processing issue or whatever... Okay, my keyboard's doing weird stuff. I'm going to have to work into that um, key hooking again. But basically it sends it here, and if the game isn't focused, then what happens is it doesn't process it, right? So, right, um, it says the last key pressed was back, right? Okay, and key hooking broke. Way to go, right? Um, so, I'm gonna have to fix that. It seems there's a little glitch when switching between um, here and stuff. Here, so when I switch back, oh, oh, okay, just a weird bug. I'll have to look into that. So yeah, obviously I've worked on the login screen and I've added uh, another event on click, and I'm probably going to be add be adding another. I'm um, sorry, I added on click and then I also added um, an on mouse move, and I'm probably going to be adding um, another event, uh, an on load event, right? Because I mean, it's it's a lot of work just to like have a stupid function detect when the the map is um, done so basically what would happen is you'd create a, or I'd create an object here I'd call it um, I don't know on load or something right and texture equals null right so empty texture I don't even have to do that there I can just like that and you can say on load equals right so it's basically a function that would be called um, when the object is being loaded right uh, so it, I'm probably gonna want your. Pro I'm probably gonna wanna pretty much just only keep it at the end, uh, but it could be very handy not only for map loading but for music and stuff, right? To start to uh, sounds and stuff or start music, right? Um, you know, and I was also thinking um, to uh, you know have the program read the text or something. Uh, me and my friends were talking about. Uh, you know, using Microsoft's uh, shitty um, text-to-speech crap. Um, I might want to make my own text-to-speech crap or whatever. Uh, it's not overly difficult to do, so I might just do that for the game. Otherwise, I'm, you know, it's pretty easy to just uh, use uh, Microsoft's API or whatever to convert the text to speech and, you know, play it or something for the game plot or something. Because, I mean, the game, uh, the intro plot is pretty long, right? I mean... People are gonna want for want to skip this, right? So this is like the big ass intro game story, right? Um, in short, pretty much what happens is everyone Earth dies, <laughs> and then they become like a killer race or whatever, right? This um this is a first person point of view story, right? I guess you guys can just read it, right? It's ccg.hotnoob.com slash codename ssg. I don't know why it's CCG. Oh my god. It's, it should be SSG. Oh, it's CCG because of Community Core Games. Whoops, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know my own gaming company name. So, yeah. Um, for Textbox, obviously, I don't know if you've probably figured this out after first seeing it, but um, rather than a text box, box object, I've just decided to go with a function here, right? So you can make anything writable. Um, actually, I already re recorded this video once, right? But I screwed up because my mic wasn't working very well. So basically, um, to make something a text box, right? 
I don't think I can make the particles a text box because it doesn't get rendered but um, to make something a text box all you gotta do is add the on click equals select current text right it's pretty simple and it's not overly difficult on the processing which is why I decided to go with just making a function to convert the thing into a text box rather than um, actually um, you know creating a text box object right it's, it's a lot more efficient um, yeah so as you can see this text or this font is really ugly and there's offset issues so I'm going to be changing that font right because you know this font oops you can't actually see that ah. So as you can see, the keyboard works well enough, but there, there are some issues. Um, I still have to add uh, some keys. So I, as you can see, you can't see those keys, and you know, all those special keys. I'll show you guys what ones I need to add on. Right. So I need to add support for all of those keys and whatnot, those special symbols. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to go here to uh, the vents and show you guys the code behind it. Right. Okay, uh, let's see, check mouse. Here we are, so this is the uh, the key down event, right? This is um, basically uh, Windows will detect when you press the key down and then the hooking will send um, that information to uh, the program and you get stuff like that happening, right? Windows handles all of that, except, um, you know, they only send you a number, right? You only have a number, which is the number on your keyboard, so you have to do a lot of additional processing. I know, it's not very efficient, but it's, uh, Windows does it because it's for the best compatibility with programming and whatnot. So, uh, there are no, as far as I know anyway, there are no pre-built functions to handle all of the messages on your keyboard, like caps lock. Um, you guys can't see me tapping the caps lock right now, but caps lock and whatnot, right? And shift. So I've had to manually program that in myself. So um, yeah, uh, here we are. We see character equals and event character to key. Um, I'm also probably going to be adding uh, an on um, key down event. I'm not sure about that. If I want to, uh, there are some situations where I, I'd probably need to use it. But I mean, it's not very efficient, so I might as well maybe just hard code it in. I don't know. <clears throat> but um, I'm definitely probably going to actually well in the old code name SSG all I did was I had a, an on key or sorry an on enter key down and an on tab key down um, I'm not sure if I want to do it that way this time anyway I'm going to open up the, this function here uh, event key to character right basically it checks for if the shift is down and I already fixed it a bit um, but yeah, and then here it checks if the um, the shift is down, and if it doesn't equal the caps lock status, right? So uh, that's a, that might be a bit confusing to you guys. So um, let's say you had the caps lock down, then you get all caps, right? But if you press shift, then you get lowercase, right? So to emulate that or to sim, you know, to give the same effect, um, pretty much, um, you only have capital letters if one of them is enabled, right? So if you have a shift down, you're going to get... Um, if you have only the shift down, you're going to get capital letters. If you have only the caps locked down, you're going to get capital letters. And if you have both of them up, so if they're both true, then you're getting, going to get lowercase letters, right? Um, I don't know how well you understood that, but hopefully that should be one of the simplest things in this program that you should understand. Um, yeah. Uh, obviously this doesn't look very efficient. I'm, prob I'm probably going to have to um, just change this. I'll probably turn it into an array and use the dot find method or something. Because uh, that is a lot of work, just adding in all of those keys into this format. But like I said before, unfortunately I don't know of any um, pre-built functions that can turn um, the key data or the, the keys into an actual proper string based on the keyboard, right? So I'm slowly programming that all in. 
and I believe I did the same thing with codename SSG the, the previous time, right? So I got the old source code up here. I mean, it's a real big mess. I can't tell what the hell is happening, right? Uh, I got a buffer. String buffer. Enter key, exit key. Tab key. Okay, I see what I got here. Uh, This was the text object that I used. Um, I gave it a string with a, a buffer, um, and then I gave it some uh, backspaces. And if the enter key was on, exit key. It's a lot different. So it's a bit. It's a less efficient setup, right? As you can see, this game is one big mess, right? I got m the majority of the files in one file in this game, so it's very hard to navigate. I mean. Um, when I try to get people to work on it, they didn't want to work on it because it was so messy, right? So that's why I got this sort of obsession with keeping my uh, code clean and stuff, right? Because this was, um, you know, my very first program that I ever made in C Sharp. So yeah, anyway, um, that's pretty much it for uh, day four here. Um, hope you guys could understand at least half of that. Right? Um, so yeah, I've got the login screen, you know, all set up, ready for me to develop, other than that whole font crap here. And yeah, so basically I'm just going to create the login screen tomorrow, and then I'm also going to start with the server side, so then you guys can see some aspects of the server side programming for a video game or whatever, right? So yeah. Um, this is Hot Noob, you guys can come check out my blog at hotnoob.com, and yeah, I guess I'll see you guys later.